Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger West London Suicidal, and today, well last night in fact, I had uh, I discovered a YouTube channel called Exploring Alternatives, which is a, uh, a YouTube channel that kind of um, showcases uh, people who live well, alternative lifestyles, um, you know, living in tiny huts, in uh, tra or in tiny houses, um, trailers, um, you know, tiny yurts on sailboats, you know, catamarans and monohulls and uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, houseboats and um, people who live in you know off the grid. Uh, independent, more more freeing, more enjoyable lifestyles to them. You know, people who are living life in a way that uh, that is is different from from the norm. And it, it's 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 such a cool channel. You're li living in a van, traveling around, backpacking. Like it's it's just it's it's an unbelievably cool YouTube channel. I think, um, and I'm so so glad I found it last night because. Honestly, like, that's been something that interests me, personally, for, for a long time. Is, um... Are, are, are these more... Humble, I guess? Ways of, uh, of living life? Um... You know, not needing a big house with lots of fancy... Uh, stuff. Just kind of living a life and... and, and enjoying yourself and not really having to worry about all these bills and and the sort of ins and outs of everyday life of everyday modern life um, it's always been something that really really interests me I've always wanted to you know like build a cabin in the middle of nowhere like uh, my self-reliance or um, live in a uh, in a trailer on a on a on a plot of land somewhere, just a tiny little plot of land, and um, you know, like that's that's always been something that that interests me to a to a great deal. Um, and uh, to have found a channel, like I found channels where people are living like this, like um, my self reliance, for example, as I mentioned earlier, people are living off grid, um, more independent lifestyles um, and it, 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 it's been very very interesting watching them go about their lives but I it, it was so cool to find like one channel that kind of went over just hundreds of different people's lives and, and how they're living and how they're making you know the money for to afford their way and, and how they eat and and uh, you know get around and how they shower and, and, and all of these things that we take for granted in our everyday lives and, and kind of tackling these problems and the the financial situations and and everything like that to kind of make it work. It, it was just a really, really, really cool channel to find. I highly recommend you check out Exploring Alternatives, even if you're like not personally interested in, uh, in living in, uh, you know, one of these more abstract... Um, lifestyles. Uh, it, it's it's really cool to see uh, how other people are are tackling all these problems that we, again, kind of take for granted with all of the the modern day conveniences. Um, it's it's so so cool. Um, but one of the things that really stood out to me, honestly, were a lot of people who like lived on so on, on sailboats and just sailed around the world like that was just what they did you know like when they wanted to go to Europe they just sail over to Europe they wanted to go to you know Asia they just sail to Asia they want to go to you know South America they just sail to South America you know like wherever they want to go they're just like all right let's just go you know and there's a, a whole lot of planning and um, preparation and stuff involved when they make a, a decision to go, you know, that far away from civilization for that long, um, and waiting for the right time to do it, and you know, checking all the weather forecasts and and yada yada yada. But it was it was really really cool to see that because I never thought about that. You know what I mean? Like I I I thought about previous sort of ways of of living, um, alternatively, like uh, 
buying a plot of land and getting a, a tiny house, building a cabin, um, you know, something of, of that sort of nature. I'd never thought about, like, I think I've talked about it before, like, living in a, in a small cabin, and, and my main concerns being just the internet and the, the sewage. Um, and I guess electricity to a certain extent. Um, but you can handle it, especially in a permanent, um, like, thing. You know, whether it's a sailboat or a home or whatever, like, um, you, you can definitely get by pretty easily having, uh, some proper setup with, like, a lot of solar panels and, and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, like, satellite internet can be reasonably quick. And uh, it's going to get faster as, uh, like, Starlink goes off and stuff, but, um, then, uh, but, but then always it comes down to the sewage, you know, like, I don't really want to have to, like, deal with, like, an outhouse or something, like, I'd want a, a proper septic tank, then that costs money, um, but, I was, I was looking at all these sailboats, and it, it just seems like such a fascinating way to live, you know? And uh, I've wanted a boat for a long time, and, and like my main issue is that I don't have the money to afford a boat, because you know, you have to pay for, for rent wherever you're living, and you have to pay for, um, you know, the all the, the, the you know, diesel or gas or whatever. Um, to, to get all of it running, and, um, you have to pay for, to, like, you know, dock it or whatever. You can't, you can't like, anchor it, <laughs> and then head off to, um, to, uh, to home for, like, a, a month and come back and, and expect your boat to just be right where you left it, because, um, yeah, it, it, it just it don't work that way. <laughs> if you, your anchor can drag along the, the seafloor just fine in, uh, in in heavy tides or, or winds or whatever, right? It'll keep you relatively safe while you're on the boat, you know? Like, you get up in the morning or whatever and you're like, wow, we moved a little bit, eh? Um, but, uh, you know, most of that is just going to be swinging around where the anchor is set, probably, unless the forecast is really bad and you, you, you know, whatever right like like you it's, it's prevalent but like when you're when you're on the boat for the time you're not gonna like lose your boat you're still gonna be on your boat you know what I mean so you just like worst case scenario you're just re-anchoring somewhere else or whatever right um but um so so when you uh and, and anchoring somewhere is, is generally fairly affordable if not free um, it's just you have to like pretty much be on the boat when you uh, when you do it um, you can go away for a while but like you can't just like leave your your boat anchored out in the bay and then just come back like a while later and expect it to be fine um, like, I mean I mean like a long while later like, you, you can definitely anchor it and then you know, head off on land and camp out for a week or two or whatever and, and be fine. Just just totally fine. Um, oh, but I saw the Glock, dude. Anyway, so so the, the, the moral of the story is, is you have to pay for somewhere to put it, right? Like, if I'm living at home, I can't just anchor my boat somewhere and, like, you know, dinghy out to, <laughs> um, to, to, to land and go home and then come back, like, a month or two later and, and go out again, you know? Like, I, I can't just do that. You have, to, you have to anchor it somewhere, or, or pull it out of the land, or pull it out of the water, um, and then store it somewhere, right? If you're living on the boat, though, that kind of disappears. Your 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 fees for remaining, you know, docked or whatever are um, but like that's that's your rent essentially, right? Thank you. Like that, that's your rent, right? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's affordable. Like ultimately, how much? Like what costs more? Like a, a a plot of land for a house, rent, or like you know, uh, just reach through the wall, eh? 
or like a um uh payment plan on the you know 35 40 foot boat money anyone i don't know like i, I think it's affordable you know what i mean um the issue the main issue for uh for me with doing that is i i don't have like much income to be able to do that all of my income is based on living in bc um so if i'm like sailing around the world or something like that like my income just kind of disappears um and then uh where is it i also you know where the heck is it dude kf kf right kf kf1 westmoreland yeah you know, I, um, I don't have the money to afford it. Even, like, I don't have the money to live on my own somewhere with rent right now anyway, right? Like, let alone buying a boat and then, like, living in a marina or something. You know, like, I don't have the money for that. Even if it might be around the same cost. Like, I, just, I don't have the money for that. Um, and then another issue for me, we're going to get to the main one for sure. But uh, another issue for me with regards to, to living on a, on a sailboat is... Uh, the Minecraft series I can dump, okay? Like, I, I haven't dumped it. I'm still planning on editing it and getting it up. I really got to get off my butt and do that. It's just like a billion clips, and I've just been super demotivated. Um, but, like, I can dump the Minecraft series, okay? But the KF2 series, it, it's got to remain, you know, at my uh, at my side. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I can't get rid of it. It's, it's too important to me. So if I'm going to be on a boat... I, I have to have, you know, at least 40 minutes, 50 minutes of, uh, of power on a gaming PC, playing video games, and then uh, have internet, you know, even if it's rather slow, to, uh, to upload the videos. And, uh, you know, if, if I was going to be doing that, I'd probably end up making, like, a live vlog on it as well. But, um... You know, on a boat, power is limited. You can get solar panels and wind generators, and you can drag, you know, water turbines or whatever behind you as well. And um, you can you can kind of generate some power on a, on a boat. You can generate a, a staggering amount of power on a on a boat. Like I could get the power for like a a gaming laptop or something like that, right? Like that would be totally fine. And then. Uh, like record, edit the videos, and do all that kind of stuff. I, I could probably even like while we're like you know, and if you're in a marina or something like that, you usually have like an electrical hookup as well, and uh, all of this kind of stuff. Well, you usually have access to it. It costs something typically, um, or you know, you pay a little bit extra for the uh, just to stay there in the first place, and then the electrical is included. But um, in any kind of like modern adequate marina um you're gonna have electricity um a lot of them you're not right like a lot of them don't have electricity because you're just you're in a third world country or something and um you don't really have access to these uh utilities um but that that's a decision you make when you're deciding to travel to you know indonesia or something right or something i don't know Indonesia, like, it's a bad example. Um, Indonesia has garbage, but they probably also have electricity, is my guess. At, at the, um, um, at the, uh, marinas or whatever that, that you dock at. If they even have marinas, I don't know. Like, I haven't been to an Ind Indonesia, you know? I just, I just thought of a, I was, I was trying to think of a country where conditions at the, um, in the waters kind of suck. I was like, I don't know, Indonesia waters kind of suck because there's, like, garbage everywhere. Um, but does that necessarily relate to, uh, to the, uh, to the experience of, of uh, like, docking in an Indonesian marina? I've got no idea, dude. Um, anyway. So I could probably get the, the, the power for it, and especially while we're docked somewhere, I could probably get the power to even, like, continue running the Minecraft series. <laughs> you know, like, like, I probably have that. Um... The uh, the other issue for me, one of the other issues, is that um, I don't have... Like, I love boats, okay? I, I love being out on a boat. I love being out on the water. The ocean is just, like, an incredibly 
Um, amazing place to me. Uh, living on a boat out on the water would just like it, it would be a dream, you know. Like like I've I've dreamt about literally. It's it's been a uh, something that I've wanted for like a long time. I've I've talked about it the other day. Um, like being on a boat is 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 just such a great experience to me. And fishing and and doing all this kind of stuff. Like it's it's really 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 nice for me personally. I really enjoy it. Um. So I think I would enjoy that kind of lifestyle, but. Uh, the other issue is that I don't have any experience with actually sailing, right? And look, you cannot just decide that you're going to live on a boat, go buy a sailboat, and then just start sailing around the world. You got to kind of buy the boat, you know, kind of like sail it around sort of your local <laughs> coast, get used to what sailing is like, the problems that are going to come up get used to fixing up the problems because like you know at the end of the day you're out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and you know you get a hole in the side of your boat you know you don't get to just like patch it up quickly and then like call the the people over you know what I mean <laughs> that the, the, to come and like fix the the hole and patch it up properly you know like you have to do that or you sink and you die um, or you, you know you pry up your uh, emergency GPS thingy and hop into your dinghy or whatever, but or um, life raft or, or whatever, right? Um, but uh, you know, like like when 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 a problem comes up, you know your your water maker isn't working. Um, uh, you know the the fridges are broken. Um, your stove's not working you you like whenever you have a problem any kind of problem your engines are not working your motors broken like whatever happens you're the only person there you're injured you're the only doctor you're the only technician you're the only you know plumber you're the only person or people who with or without knowledge of how to fix the problem you're the only people physically who are like there to do it so um you you kind of have to um, be able to do all this kind of stuff and, and you have to get that experience handling it and being confident uh, that you're going to be able to handle at least most of the problems that come up uh, as you're out on the uh, on the waters before you go and make a commitment like sailing across an ocean you know what I mean um, so for the first while you're not like crossing oceans and stuff you're you're just traveling up and down the coast and if something happens, then you're not too far away from help, you know? Worst case scenario, you can, you know, end up getting help within, like, an hour, probably, you know what I mean? Um, so that's that's kind of where you, you start out with. Typically, you know, you'd have somebody who knows what they're doing, showing you the ropes and stuff like that as well. Um, and then uh, another problem for me is that I don't want to do a lot of the stuff that is... Uh, necessary for that kind of lifestyle like I don't, I don't want to work on motors and engines and you know do all this kind of stuff I'm fine with you know being the person in charge of uh, like I don't know cooking um, fishing you know like cleaning gutting fish um, like help like planning the the diet and all this kind of stuff like that that that's sort of like logistical stuff and like navigational and, and and that kind of stuff that all interests me that all that all's good you know do you see that did, did you see me line up that shot and then take it did, did you see that <laughs> oh that one felt good dude um that kind of logistical stuff totally okay by me I'm, I'm fine with being in charge of that um you know first aid um you know, whatever, all good by me. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, everybody's kind of got to be capable of handling everything, because you know, if uh, you know, let's say it's me and, uh, and, a, and a husband of mine out on the waters, and my husband is sick, and I'm taking care of him, and uh, the motor fails. He's not able to do it. I I have to do it. You know, like so. So when when he's fixing stuff, I'd, I'd pay attention and kind of understand what's going on and, and be able to have 
some kind of an understanding and you know maybe have some communication between us as I um, we kind of diagnose the problem and fix it at least um, but like you know not really my kind of thing so basically there are like two like two and a half main problems that I would have to sort out before I would be able to commit to to living on a boat um, the first of which is that I have to get a partner who wants to do all that kind of stuff um, I, I gotta find you know somebody who I want to live on a boat with who would be like yeah no I'm fine with like handling the the grunt work because you handle the other work you know what I mean kind of like split the, the work that way which is how it happens in a lot of these boats with uh, with couples is um one person will handle all the like electrical mechanical kind of stuff and then somebody else handles um the other stuff you know these kind of naturally fall into those roles so I, I need to find somebody who wants to do that and is okay with doing that and okay with taking on that responsibility and and kind of splitting the roles that way um you know, somebody who wants to do it, right? And then, uh... So that's that's kind of like one problem, for sure. Um, and then I would have to... Um, like, get experience sailing. So either, uh, like, learn how to do it, you know, end up, uh... You know, joining a, a you know, yacht club or something like that. Uh, and then I'd also have to have the money to afford it um which is, is kind of like a half problem because i, I kind of have the money but kind of don't um you know Who's short of cash? so but it'd be nice one day right to, to just kind of like live on a sailboat and then you know be like you know what next week let's go to Low on ammo. portugal you know like let's just go you know and you don't have to like like it's not a big investment like the like whether you're living at sea or whether you're living like in a marina the cost is pretty similar it's probably cheaper at sea because you don't have to pay for the marina costs quality of life a little bit lower significantly lower for sure um but like there's no financial strain to just like traveling to another country aside from customs and uh, all of that, right? Um, so there, there isn't really a, a huge deterrent to to say, no, we can't go to, to Portugal, other than, you know, the fact that you have to sail across the ocean to get there. Um, but, you know, assuming the weather conditions are, are high or whatever, like, if, you know, if you want to go to Portugal, you're never really like, well, we'll have to, like, save up for that. It's just like, yeah, let's just wait until the day when it's, uh, you know, a good idea to do that, and then let's go do it, you know what I mean? Like, that just, that's so cool to me. Um, so i kind of been looking into how much it would cost and all that, because, like, genuinely, living in a, uh, I almost want to, like, do another, yeah, let's do another one, because I'm still talking about this, okay? I'm liking this conversation. Because genuinely, I, uh, I've planned on living in a, um, like, apartment or something like that for a long time. Um, just because, like, I don't know, it's, it's the norm. But I've also thought about, like, um getting a trailer and living in a trailer on like a, a campsite or something like that as well and uh you know all these kinds of things um as well so i mean i don't know right i think i could move out on a trailer like basically like next week though um which would be cool i'm pretty sure it's within my budget because i have to spend like if i if i spend six hundred dollars a month i think on um like a place to stay and uh and um like uh, electricity and water like six hundred dollars a month that, that that's uh, affordable for me with uh, with my current income which is why i want like five hundred dollars a month american 
um, which would end up being like seven hundred dollars Canadian or something like that. So that'd give me like seven hundred dollars extra towards the rent and towards um, like savings and stuff like that. Which six hundred dollars a month for rent is including putting some money away for savings every month as well. So um, I think I could do that if I bought a trailer and lived at like a, a cheap campsite somewhere. Um, it could probably be doable. Because, like, financing a trailer is probably, like, 80, 90 bucks a month. Um, and then a cheap campsite is, like, you know, 500 bucks a month, and you get, uh, electricity and hydro, you know, all that kind of stuff included. Uh, assuming you aren't, like, way overboard on the electricity. Um, so. Yeah, could be, could be doable. For sure. But, um, yeah, it, it could be fun. So, we'll see. We'll see. But, I don't know, like, living on a, on a, on a, on a boat just kind of... It feels like a, a nice idea. It's just, it's just not something that I could do next week. You know what I mean? Like, I'd, I'd have to spend a year or something, like, just kind of, like, learning how to sail and... I'm getting in shape to be able to manage a, sh a sailboat and like all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But it would be cool. Finding a partner who's going to be able to, romantically or otherwise, um, preferably romantically. Um, just that it's, it's a time consuming process before that commitment is uh, something that I'd want to make. You know, like you can go find somebody who will sail with you, right? Like. That's not hard, right? Um, you, you can sail by yourself, too. It's not necessarily safe. Uh, I wouldn't do it. Ever. <laughs> Under, you know, if I wasn't, like, forced to. Um, but so you, you can do it by yourself, too. I, I'd want to go with at least one other person, though, so that we can, uh, we can take watches um, at, at night. Because otherwise, you know, you're sleeping, and you have no idea if uh, if you're being approached by, uh, like, a pirate ship or something even, you know? Like, like it's... There's, there's, there's problems, to be sure, so... Um... Perfect. This way. It's that one. Um... Yeah, I don't know. But the, 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 that whole, like, alternative lifestyle thing, um, that exploring alternatives kind of explores... Is, is just, it's really, really cool to me. I really love it. Um, so, I don't know, like a tiny house or something could be could be cool as well. Like, I, I could move out probably next month pretty easily if uh, on, on my current budget if I were to go for, for something like that, you know? Which is um, really cool, I think. I would have to downsize some stuff. Like, my computer not gonna work uh like this is a, a heavy very power hungry like gaming computer you know um i'd have to downsize it to a uh, more reasonable like gaming laptop probably if i were going to, to make that kind of a commitment and that, like i don't know it's just the, there there are a lot of commitments i wouldn't want to make unless it meant like everything else was perfect and, and that kind of involves um having somebody who's who I'm going to be able to like spend my time with and and uh, like enjoy spending my time with, um, and then then having some kind of practical benefits to having that uh, that reduced like that kind of like you know downsizing happening right. Like for instance, on a sailboat, you're able to just sail away and, and go do whatever you want. That's a pretty big benefit to the uh, to the downsides of of being on a sailboat, right? Like the the. The benefits definitely are there, but whether you like them or not, you know whether they're worth it or not. You gotta admit that uh, there is definitely a, uh, a pretty significant upside to um, to being on a sailboat. Um, you know the, the downsides might not necessarily um, be outweighed by them, but they are the, the upsides are definitely there. Um, so I don't know. It's it's a really interesting thing to think about, though, I think. 
because it's it's significantly more affordable for sure like living on a sailboat is more affordable than living on a in like a nice apartment somewhere um like a, living on a sailboat probably equivalent to living in like a small apartment like you get like a smaller boat than your apartment would have been and you pay about like the same amount you know what i mean um and then a big part of it is how much do you actually like spend on the boats and all that you got to put away like part for like money for um, maintenance and all that as well and stuff but yeah it's just um it's cool right it's, it's really cool I think so I don't know you know maybe 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 this time next year I'm uh, I'm living on a sailboat I tell you it would be a dream if I were uh, it would be a total dream come true were I to be living on a sailboat this time next year. You know, maybe maybe I'm out in the uh, Atlantic Ocean somewhere. I highly doubt that. A year from now, out in the no, I probably will not be out in the ocean <laughs> a year from now. Not like uh, super far. Maybe I'm out in the Atlantic Ocean, but uh, probably out in the Pacific Ocean and probably mostly coastal, really. Um. I wouldn't really. Uh, I don't. I don't think I'd be ready for that kind of a commitment yet. Mostly, mostly riding around the coast. Um, but it, it, it just seems so cool, you know. Like whenever I want to go fishing, instead of having to like drive my boat out to the ocean, I just like drive my house to wherever the fish are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that just. Oh, it's just, it just sounds so incredible it's, it sounds like such an incredible lifestyle and I'm not I'm not like old you know but I'm not super young either right like there comes a point in time when you know you're not really able to do that physically anymore right and it's not like just around the corner for me I, I'd say you know like maybe 55 ish is is probably about when uh, when most people would be like yeah you know let's let's uh let's cut out the um, you know global laps <laughs> that we've been doing and, and let's stick to something a little bit more um, a little bit more relaxed a little bit more slowed down more enjoyable uh, calming experience um, I'm probably gonna do another episode another round here I'm just I'm having a blast talking about this it's it's been it's been good I just I could talk about this for hours and like I want to should have done an endless match man um, I'm 25 so you know it's like there's 30 years right more than my entire life that I've lived is how much time I have left which is uh, like reasonably you know what I mean uh, I could go longer than that if I stay in shape and whatnot like I could be sailing when I'm 60 sure if I if I plan for it and keep my keep keep healthy and all that sure you know it could be it could be done um, Got some ammo here. but uh, First batch of Zeds heading your way. Get ready to the I don't know it's just, um, it's not really scaring me that, like, I have to get it done now. It's just kind of like, uh, you know, if I decide I want to go and live in a tiny house right now, it's not really, like, cutting off my ability to, uh, in fact, it's probably significantly increasing my ability to, uh, to live on, um, on a boat eventually um, but it, it just kind of feels like you know whatever I do right now whatever I choose to do right now in a alternative kind of lifestyle with this like off-grid um, kind of thing is, is kind of gonna be like what I end up doing you know what I mean because I'm gonna end up meeting somebody like whatever I decide to do I'm at, I'm at the age where I'm gonna meet somebody who I'm gonna live with for the rest of my life in the next few years you know what I mean like I'm not I'm not far off. Make for the pod and gear 
Yeah. Like the point where where I fall in love and and uh, and start to settle down and and live the rest of my life with somebody. You know what I mean? Like I'm not far off that. Um, and if if I find somebody who's like, yeah, no, I, I I'm fine with living in like a tiny house or something. Um, you know, are are they going to be fine with giving everything up and and moving on to a sailboat as well? Um, am, am I going to be like, you know what, I have to live on a sailboat, I'm going to give you up and then find somebody else and then go live on a sailboat? You know, like, probably not. What will end up happening is, is I, I end up living in a tiny house, we get together, we have fun, we decide we want to start a family, we get a bigger house, we have a family, and um, we live our lives that way, you know? Because that's also a dream of mine, is to have that uh, that sort of... You know, stereotypical, you know, mother, father, you know, a kid or two, and uh, me running a YouTube channel. Like, that's 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 the very typical household in, uh, in 20, you know, 30 or whatever. Um, so, you know, if, if I get started on sailing, then, then maybe my, you know, I continue sailing for a while, even after... We decide we want to have kids or whatever, and uh, you know when we have kids, we uh, you know maybe we homeschool them or whatever. Um, I don't know if we really excited. I'd have to adopt, of course, and I don't know, you know, what, what adoption agency is going to be like? Yeah, you can adopt a kid and keep it on your sailboat. And would I want to bring a kid onto a sailboat? I don't know. Probably not. Um, so the cutoff date. If I'm gonna give up on on children, which I'm fine with giving up on children, is uh, that was the last one. like 55. The for but if I don't decide to cut off the like, kids in my future, then I'm probably gonna have kids before then. And once I have kids, then I can't give up everything and and go live on a sailboat. So, um, kind of ends up being a little bit earlier than that. So I don't know. It's um. It's a thought to have, right? I, th I think the um. Oop, I accidentally shot the floor. I think the right decision for me to do is to um continue losing weight, get into a point where that sort of physical activity would be within reason for me to to undergo. You know, like to to be able to actually like be on a sailboat, um manage you know the stuff do all that and then uh you know see if i can like learn how to sail a boat um make connections maybe buy like a, a used boat from somebody who's you know giving up on it for you know whatever reason or whatever and sailboat's in good condition or whatever somebody trusted or whatever right um get a get a relatively inexpensive boat from somebody who i trust and um, then, uh, you end up meeting somebody through this whole process and, uh, end up sailing around the world together. Like, that sounds like just, uh, that, that sounds like the perfect way to go for me. You know what I mean? The perfect way for, for life to kind of happen. Um, but, I don't know. I don't know. I really, I really just don't know. Like, I haven't... I've been on boats. Um, I've been on a... Uh, so the boats that I've been on are ferries. I've been on a lot of ferries, which are very, very different from a, you know, 40-foot sailboat or something, right? Um, ferries are, are quite a bit more stable, for sure. Um, like a, a large, you know, very large ferries is what I've been on. Um, quite a bit more stable than uh, than than a 40 foot. And you could fit a 40 foot um, sailboat onto the ferries I've been on, and it would just be like normal passenger <laughs> car or something. You know, like like it's not really the the, the sizes are just um, entirely entirely different. Um, so that, that's not really a good way to, to kind of recognize that I'd, I'd like to be out on the water at all. Um, but then beyond that, I have also been on charter boats. Who is 
which are more similar to it. I haven't been on a sailboat before, ever. Only motors. Um, but I loved it, you know? I, it was like, again, I talked about it in like the last episode or something, but it was like the most enjoyable experience I think I've ever had in my life was being out on the boat and fishing. Um, so, I, I have no doubt in my mind that I would like, honestly, like, the part that kind of concerns me about um, sailing, you know, all other things are going well. I get internet, I get a partner who's willing to do all of the stuff I don't want to do. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff ends up working out. Part of, like, the one thing that kind of concerns me is just, like, a lot of people want to travel around the world and, like, meet all the cultures and kind of, like, immerse themselves in it. That's not really the part that interests me so much, you know? Like, you know, traveling around the world, seeing sights and, and visiting uh, places and stuff like that, it's definitely fun. But to a lot of people, it's, like, the reason that they sail, you know? And, um... For me, the reason that I want to sail is just because, like, I, ju I just, I think it would be a way nicer way to just live, to just have that freedom. It's not really about meeting people. I don't necessarily, like, want to live my life just, like, traveling around, meeting people. Like, like I want to live a, a more quiet, separated lifestyle just on the water, you know? I don't want to be around people. I want to be by myself with, uh, with you know, a few people. And then, um, kind of manage your own stuff. And uh, then also be out on the water, because I love uh, being on the water, being out on the ocean. Um, so, like, I wouldn't really have the same kind of motivation to, like, travel to, you know, all these places and, like, meet all the people and see all the cultures. To a certain extent, yes. Like, I'm not saying I would, like... I don't want to go to the Philippines and, like, view the markets and stuff. I don't want to see the people. No, like, I'd be like, heck yeah, let's freaking go. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but it's not, like, my main thing, you know, personally. Um, camping, not really my main, like, a thing that I'd be interested in. So, like, I feel like I'm a different, I have, I have different motivations. Like, I'd be happy just, like, living on a boat just like coasting around the west coast of Canada, you know what I mean? Like that sounds great, you know? Oh yeah. We're almost out of time. So make your choices. But uh, I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to look into it more. Um see how affordable it is and see if I can get some like training on a on a boat and see how that goes. Cuz uh, yeah, I I just it was so cool when I saw it, because, I, I, again, I, I've, I've known about, like, these different alternative ways to live for, for a long time um, on land. You know, I've known about, like, living in a van. I, I've looked into that personally. Not really for me. Um, living in a van. You don't have, like, a shower or a toilet, <laughs> you know? I kind of need those, at least. Um... And then, uh, also, um, I've, I've looked into tiny houses, um, and they look great, but they're not, like, legal in a lot of places. They're actually, like, illegal in a lot of places, which is, like, not good, obviously. Um, so... Like, just, just, like, figuring out the legalities of it all and, like, figuring out how it's all going to work is, is just kind of a pain in the butt. Trailer living seems excellent to me, honestly. It's affordable. It gets me my own place. I'm able to have privacy. Um, but then finding a place to park it where you actually get that privacy, kind of difficult because you kind of have to, like, park it at a campsite um, that has, like, permanent residency. And uh, there's, like, a lot of other permanent residents in the area. It's kind of like apartment buildings, you know? except your apartments are trailers. Um, so it's affordable, but you don't really get the privacy that you want, or you're out in the middle of nowhere, you don't have, like, internet, you don't have, like, septic and all this kind of stuff, but you get your privacy. So it's kind of like a trade-off there. I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of hard to find, like, the right place to do that at that's going to be, like, perfect for me. But even just, like, living in a populated uh, permanent residency area would probably be better than living in this house that I'm in now. So I don't know. 
Um, let's see, next episode we're going to play on Biotics Lab. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I've thought about, um, like, buying land and just kind of, like, going out there and, and fiddling around with stuff and, like, learning how to maybe build, like, my own log cabin or something, similar to, like, my self-reliance or something. And that seems fun. That seems great. But then you have to worry about, like, the septic tank. You have to, like, set it up yourself or build, like, get somebody out to do it. And that's, like, a 10000 or $15,000 thing. And you have to buy the land, which is, again, expensive. And it's it's significantly more affordable than buying a house. But it, it's still, like, outside my budget. Although it would be nice, it's outside my budget. But I'd never thought about just living on a boat. So when I found it, and people are like living on boats, I'm like, wait a minute, you can do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, it was just, it was eye opening that you can just like I've seen houseboats and stuff before that people live on, which are just like houses on rafts, basically, you know. Um. But. Uh, Yeah, I just, I just like, I, I was, I was kind of mind blown when, when I saw that you can just buy like a, a sailboat and then just live in it for like ten years, and like that's just your home, like that's just where you live, you know, your home is wherever you want it to be. You just, if you want to be in America, you go to America. If you want to be in Canada, you go to Canada. If you want to be in Brazil, you go to Brazil. If you want to be in, you know. Portugal or Netherlands or France or you know whatever you just go there you know turn it into a river boat and go on through the the rivers of Europe or something like there's just an incredible amount of opportunity involved on a boat that you get to just explore so much of the world and see so many sites and not really be stuck down anywhere and you don't have to deal with like people so much it's just, it's just it's it's incredible. So, I'm gonna be seriously looking into um, living on a, on a sailboat and just sailing around the world. I'm gonna be seriously looking into that. Um, I would I would absolutely 100 percent if uh, like if I knew how to uh, to to manage all the stuff on a sailboat and I had a partner who was willing to go with me and I had the finances to like buy a boat and make that a responsible decision, 100% I would go and do it like today, you know? Like there, there isn't even a question. And it's not like an impulse decision. It's just like I didn't realize that this is what I've always wanted, you know? And that that's a common thing. I know I, should, I, know I should have just done it there in West London, it, but whatever. It's a common thing I've seen with like viewing all these people who live on boats is a lot of them are like, yeah, I really loved boats, but I just, I couldn't see how I'd be able to afford it and then also like afford living and you, know, you have to work so much you're not actually gonna be able to like go out on your boat all that much and there's just all these restrictions around it because the the finances just don't really add up when you're not like rich and then they're like but then I like saw that people were just living on their boats and it, it kind of clicked that oh yeah I don't have to live somewhere else I can just live on the boat and uh yeah, no, that, that's kind of what's happened for me. Is I, it, it, it just, like, clicked that, like, I can just buy a boat and then just move into the boat instead of buying a boat and then having to live somewhere else and then having to, like, afford it all and, like, all that kind of stuff. Like, I can just buy a boat and live on it. Um, And that's just... Uh, I mean, I've talked about it for, like, an hour now, but... So I'm sure you can see how, how excited I would be to do that, which is very excited. Um... I would love to if I could, for sure. Absolutely. <sighs> um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be seriously looking into it. Because uh, if, if it were possible for me to do it right now, I would. Absolutely. It, like I don't want to be living where I am right now. Apartment living doesn't really interest me that much either. Being out on a sailboat. Even if I'm like not traveling around the world. Even if I'm just traveling you know, up and down the coast of Vancouver Island. You know? Like, just being on a boat, being able to go out fishing whenever I want, 
be able to hear the ocean waves and, and smell that that fresh ocean air and you know see all of the the fish in the sea and like it's just ah oh, I want it I want it so badly I want it so badly so 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 badly so um one day maybe I mean, I'm, I'm I'm seriously gonna be looking into it I'm gonna be looking into the finances of it and what I have to do to make it work um because yeah I, w- I would give up everything except for the kf2 series the kf2 series has to stay and if I did live on it if I did live on a boat again I'd probably end up doing like a vlog or something like that not to make money but just because like I don't know what else are you gonna do when you're on a boat <laughs> you know, at the end of the day it's really exciting to live on a boat right but there's not much to do on the boat um so you got to find something to keep yourself occupied right and uh, you can't really do stuff that uses too much power like a whole gaming computer running 24 7 with the screens on and everything you're gonna need a, you're gonna need an awful lot of solar panels and an awful lot of batteries to make that work so <laughs> um but um yeah i don't know i'm gonna have to, i'm gonna have to seriously look into it see how i can learn how to sail a boat and um like do the maintenance and all that and um like start meeting people and you know find somebody who wants to go sailing around the world or like not even around the world but just like live on a sailboat together you know that's what i want man i didn't didn't know how badly that's what i wanted until like last night when i realized it's a thing that can exist and i'm like holy crap i had no idea but that's like exactly my dream 100% Hundred percent. I uh, I love the rocking of the sea when you're out at, at uh, on the ocean or whatever. It's just it's so relaxing and the the sound of the waves is just ah oh, I love it I love it I want it so badly I want it so badly anyway we got to end the episode somewhere so we'll end it here. Remember to like the video if you like it, subscribe to see more in the future, comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.